Welcome back to this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On today's episode, we're going to decide what is the best beginner pet snake. Is it a boa constrictor or is it a ball python? Stick around. might have noticed that I don't have a boa and I don't have a ball python on my shoulder or in my hands right now and that's just simply because normally one of my ball pythons or my boa refuses to eat normally a, a ball python but on this feeding day everyone ate and you shouldn't be holding your snakes a few hours after they eat so we've got Sarah the leopard gecko helping me out with this one so let's go ahead and decide boa or ball python ball pythons are nocturnal heavy-bodied snakes from western sub-saharan Africa Boa constrictors are nocturnal heavy-bodied snakes from Central and South America. Now there's a few differences between boas and ball pythons. Uh, let's go through it. By the way, when I say boa, I'm talking about BCIs. BCCs are very similar, but BCIs is what I'm talking about because that's what Franny is, that's what I've got. So, big differences are geography, obviously. Central and South America are nowhere near Western Sub-Saharan Africa. I mean, they did touch, if you believe in the Pangea thing, which you should. And also, uh, boas don't lay eggs. Well, for the most part, right? BCIs definitely don't lay eggs. They give birth to live young, where ball pythons will lay eggs, and that's how they reproduce. And also, if you look at them side by side, boas, you'll notice, don't have heat pits. Ball pythons do. So, ball python, boa. You notice how one has pits and the other one doesn't? That's because those pits are, they're called labial pits. They're used for heat seeking. They help them find their prey. Now both these snakes are constrictors, so let's get into the size because if you're thinking about, I want to get a snake, how big does the thing get is probably the first thing you're going to think about. And the good news is, neither one of these are unmanageably large. Ball pythons are the smaller of the two, and ball pythons will get between 3 and 6 feet, and you're going to find them between a pound and a half, uh, all the way up to about 6 pounds. Anything over that is a pretty big ball python, and that's when they're full grown of course. Babies are smaller, obviously. Boa constrictors, on the other hand, they are much larger. When they get to adulthood, BCIs will get anywhere between 6 and 10 feet. It depends. And of course, both of these snakes are sexual dimorphic, which means females are larger than males in the case of both of these snakes. And then with the boa constrictors also, they're going to get pretty heavy. We're talking about 20 to 30 pounds for a full-grown adult. These are much bigger snakes. They have a little bit funnier shape, a little, a little bit taller in the belly area, not quite as round. Uh, they're more like a rectangle than a perfect circle, like a ball python is. So, since it's a head-to-head, -head, we have to pick a winner or a tie. And that's what we're going to do, because do you want a bigger snake or do you want a smaller snake? So, this one right here is a tie. We got one apiece. Now, the next bit of business is enclosure size. These are larger snakes, of course. They're heavy body snakes. They need larger enclosures than, say, Sarah here, or any other leopard gecko or smaller lizard like that. What you're going to need for a ball python, bare, bare minimum, 55 gallons. That's what I would say is a bare minimum. I would rather see you have a 75, a 90 gallon, even something over 100 gallons would probably be ideal for especially a larger female. But you can get away with 55 as a bare minimum. Make sure that it's long, not wide, so you have a good thermal heat gradient. Boa constrictors, on the other hand, you can't really get away with a commercial fish tank. Anything you're going to buy in a, in a pet store is going to be too small for an adult boa. You're going to need to make something or buy something. My suggestion is if you're not handy with tools and want to build your own, get a PVC enclosure and what I would suggest, bare minimum, 4x2 for an adult boa. But if you want a larger specimen, especially if you're getting a female, I would much rather see you have a 6x2 or even an 8x2 for a super large 10 foot female. Of course, this can vary. I mean, as long as you have uh, the length of it and the width of it being the same length as the snake, that's what I suggest. And because boas like to climb a little bit, I would suggest making it at least 18 inches, maybe two feet tall. So you're going to need a much bigger space and it's going to take a lot more to heat it and everything else that goes along with it, take up more room in your house. So I'm going to give this one to the ball python. It's easier, it's more manageable, smaller size, smaller footprint in your home. Ball python, two to one. The next thing we'll talk about is heat and humidity, and these two things are very similar actually for these animals. Uh, they do come from separate parts of the world, 
but the heat is going to be very similar if you want to know all about heating and lighting and everything for a ball python well there's a video up here the boa one we haven't made yet um, but they're pretty similar so you're going to want a high basking spot you don't want to get too low uh, anything in the 70s is probably going to be too low except for at night time for both of these guys humidity is going to be very similar with a ball python i like to stay between 50 and 60 boa i go 55 to 70 so it's very similar i can't really pick a winner here we're going to go with Thai again which means that your ball python we're at three boa constrictor two oh and normally i put lighting as a separate topic but we're just going to lump that in with heat and humidity because it's also a tie you don't need uvb light as long as you have a day and night cycle you're good for both these animals diet and feeding this is very important because well you're gonna need to feed the thing if you want to keep it alive right so these guys have similar diets in that they're both going to start on rats i would suggest starting them on rats because both are going to get too big to eat mice for their entire lives and in fact boas will graduate to rats but let's start with ball, with ball pythons first ball pythons when they're fully grown adults a medium-sized rat maybe a large rat you'll get to but you're never going to get to rabbits or anything like that and you're going to want to feed them between every 7 and 14 days depending if you're breeding them how big they are if they're losing whatever it is there's a whole video again the ball python video i pointed to earlier you can check that out boas on the other hand are going to need much larger meals because they're much larger animals and they're going to be less frequent as well so my boa for example i only feed once every two weeks and she's only a juvenile she's only two years old so she's maybe five feet maybe five feet so as she gets older we're going to go to three and then to four weeks some people will go even six or eight weeks so you're going to need to feed them less but here's the big difference ball pythons will go off food for no reason any time of the year just because boas don't do this in my experience anyway i've had two boas i still have one they don't miss a meal they eat for you unless they're sick or whatever i've never had that issue ever before but ball pythons are known for hunger strikes boas are not you need to feed them less sure the feeders are a lot bigger and they're going to cost a little bit more but you need less of them this one's going to the boa constrictor which means that we're three apiece behavior is an important thing as well because now you've got this thing home you have it set up it's an enclosure you got the food in the freezer frozen thawed all the way by the way the next thing you're going to want to think about is how do i handle this thing what are they like uh do they are they active are they not can i watch a movie with this thing well i think that the best way to describe a ball python is lazy it's lazy it's slow normally it balls itself up which is why it's called a ball python to protect its head rather than striking at you it doesn't mean that you can't get bit but if you do it's not a super big deal they're not going to leave too much of an impact on your hand or whatever it is that they bite these guys will sit on your lap and watch a movie with you sit around your neck they don't move all that much they're not quick they're pretty easy to handle especially if you're new to snakes bow constrictors are larger they're not super quick but the way that they strike is like lightning in my experience anyway and i'm not a boa expert by any means i've had tons and tons of ball pythons i've only had two boa constrictors but both of them can strike from all angles they don't have to be s'd up that that signature s look in their neck they will just strike to the side they'll strike behind them they're crazy but this is only for food generally i've never had one that's super cranky they leave off this big hiss if they don't want to be touched which is very different from the ball python hiss that you might hear sometimes but they're a lot quicker uh, in my opinion they're more apt to bite just judging by what i hear from other people i've never been bit by either one knock on wood uh, but i would think that the boa is probably more challenging maybe more exciting if you like big snakes but for a beginner for sure i would definitely say a ball python is more manageable it's less likely to bite you and if it does it's not as big of a deal because it's not as big of a snake just look at the size of the heads between the two I'm going to give this one to the ball python, which means they're at four and boas are only at three. The next thing is cost and availability, because if you can't buy one because you can't find one or afford one, what's the point of watching this video? Good news, you didn't waste your time, because both are very easy to find, both are very easy to afford as well. Ball pythons go all day for 30 bucks if they're normals. That's very normal. Even in a pet store, 70 bucks. Don't ever buy from PetSmart and Petco. They rip you off and you're getting a sick animal likely. But even at a reputable breeder, they're going to be pretty darn cheap. I've literally bought a very tiny, small, male, normal ball python for five bucks. Boas, on the other hand, they're pretty cheap as well. You can buy it for 25, 45, 65 bucks if they're normals. Uh, but there's 
because the the morphs are harder to come by they're a little bit harder to breed they do get more expensive which is going to be uh our next topic is morphs so uh, they're more expensive when you get into the morphs where with an albino like pikachu here or a banana like zapdos here they're pretty affordable i mean you can buy almost any ball python nowadays for under 800 bucks there are some different ones gravels freeways things like that scaleless head scaleless that are going to be over a thousand bucks but most of them are under 800 bucks where Boas, a lot of them, it's pretty easy to get to a thousand bucks. If you got two recessive genes in a boa, at least in my area, thousand bucks guaranteed every time. This one, and also the other thing too, ball pythons are easier to find. Boas aren't hard to find, but ball pythons are on every table at every expo. They're way easier. This one's a no-brainer. Five points for the ball python and three for the boa constrictor. And our last category is morphs. Now, if you're brand new and this is your first snake, maybe this doesn't mean a lot to you, but if you've been watching a lot of YouTube and you know there's lots out there, maybe this is important. And if you want a crazy looking snake, ball pythons are going to give you way more for your money. Uh, boas are more expensive, they're harder to find in morphs. I mean, even a, just a regular albino in my area, you'd be lucky to get $400 for a baby. Where with a uh, ball python for a baby, albino, 200 bucks is not that hard to find especially if it's a male. And of course also there's just way more ball pythons to choose from. Boas do have several different morphs now. It's kind of evening out. There's a lot more than there used to be. But ball pythons are the king of morphs when it comes to snakes. I mean, maybe corn snakes rival them, but there's way more and they're way more affordable, which kind of goes into our last category, the no brainer here. Uh, this is gonna even out at exactly double <laughs> for the ball python with six. And then we got three over here for the boa constrictor. So. I mean, in a head-to-head -head challenge for if you're just looking at the facts and these categories that I've made up, then your ball python is going to win. That's going to be the better snake for a beginner, in my opinion. It's smaller. Uh, basically, everything is better for a beginner besides the eating factor. But besides that, I mean, ball python's your winner. What do you think? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Is there something I should have added or something that I left out? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what I should do next week. And that's it. That's this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Thank you very much for coming back. Of course, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.